back to another video. Today we are going to be going over a MLB recap. Uh, if I look at the standings here, for most teams we are getting into that 35 to 40 game mark in that threshold, which indicates a quarter of the season being completed. I thought it was a good time to go over our sort of recap for stats, looking at who might be a World Series contender, who is a underdog that is surprising a lot of people, and who is could be, at least, that elusive MVP, which is who you're going to make your money on investing in. So we're going to start off by just going over the standings and some surprising things. Um, something that I'm shocked with is the fact that the Red Sox are 24-14. and 14. Um, I've talked in a lot of my videos, and make sure to check out my um, minor league like prospect video. I talked about five guys, but one guy that I'm extremely high on is Jaron Duran, and he is a center fielder for the Red Sox. I thought they would be probably ahead of the Orioles, but worse than the Jays, Rays, and Yankees. And surprisingly, they are 22-14, and 14, leading the division with an insanely high run differential at plus 33. And that is something that is extremely surprising due to the fact that that team has so many holes in it. The pitching staff's depleted. I think Chris Sale is still hurt. So that's something that's extremely surprising to me. And I don't know if they are going to be viewed as World Series contenders. But at this moment in time, I think we have to. Just due to the fact of how well they've been playing and how top-heavy their division seems to be with the Red Sox, Yankees, and Rays. The Rays have been mediocre the Yankees have been mediocre at best, but surprisingly are above 500. So it's surprising to see the Red Sox at eight games above 500. We'll be talking about at least one, if not two players later on in this video that are MVP candidates. But we're going to move on to a team that is extremely surprising, which is the Chicago White Sox. Now the division is very poor this year. Um, I mean, you've got the Twins with Byron Buxton still eight games under 500. He's They've just been depleted with injuries. You've got the Royals at under 500. The Indians are hovering around to just over 500. So I would expect the White Sox to finish with a very favorable record this year, even though they have many injuries. But they are being led by Carlos Rodon, a potential Cy Young candidate. He is just playing out of his mind. They are without Eloy Jimenez. For at least the first half or so of this season, and they are now without Luis Robert or Luis Robert um, for the next couple of months, which will be very interesting to see if players like Nick Madrigal and Tim Anderson and um, Jose Abreu can step up in their absence. But that's something we're going to have to watch. But I wouldn't be very worried with the White Sox considering how bad their division is. But what is extremely surprising is how good. Their pitchers have been. They've scored 164 runs, but have only allowed 111 just due to that pitching staff. They're on a 7-3 and three in their past 10 games. They're just a team that is catching fire at the beginning of the season. Let's hope that momentum can hang on because that is going to be a scary team to watch once Eloy and Lewis Robert are back and that team is fully healthy. Another surprising team is the Oakland Athletics. They've kind of leveled out after they had won, I think, 13 or 14 in a row. But what I'm so surprised about is that they have a negative 10 run differential and are six games above 500. It's just wild to see that they are they must be winning those games by really close margins and then getting blown out in others, which is something that I don't know if many teams have ever done that and won a, won a World Series I think the Astros, with their insanely high run differential, how good their players are hitting, we'll cover them in a sec too. I just don't see many teams beating them. I think, I don't know if their pitching staff is fully healthy, but I would have to expect if they aren't, the Astros are just going to catch fire and take over the entire league. The Mariners have a guy that we're going to talk about later on, probably two or three guys, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to watch. Maybe not this year, but they're a team that could be on a hot start next year. And then on to the National League. This division right here, the NL East, I don't know what's going on with them. I feel like any of these teams could win the division. Maybe not the Marlins. I could see the Nationals, maybe. I could see the Braves for sure. I could see the Phillies, the Mets. The fact that they're three games above 500 with how poor their team is hitting, it's just extremely surprising. But as you can look here, I mean, the only team that has a positive run differential, which doesn't mean everything, but I'd like to, I like to take it as a 
kind of sign to see how well you're going to fare. This is just surprising that three teams leading the division all have negative run differentials. The NL Central is another surprising division. Um, my Reds are not having the best season. They started off pretty hot against some really bad teams, and now they've kind of gotten caught up to. But this is going to be probably, as it's been, one of the most competitive divisions in the entire MLB. You've got the Cardinals just leading ahead with seven games above 500, and I think they should be the clear-cut favorite to win the division. I don't know much about Milwaukee, but I think Yelich is still injured, so the fact that they're three games above 500 is surprising. You've got the Reds that just don't seem to be doing anything wrong. They just don't seem to be doing anything extremely right. You've got guys hitting for average, but then you've got guys that can't hit the ball at all. Their pitchers are not playing to the level that they should be. And without Bauer, it's really hurting them. And then the Cubs, they're just a team that's been playing horrible this year. Like, And I don't think even Cubs fans will say I'm being too harsh in saying that. The team overall is not playing well. Chris Bryant's playing like an MVP candidate. But is that enough? I don't think it is. You have to have guys step up like Rizzo and Baez as well as that pitching staff. So we'll see how they'll step up in the second half or at least the end of the first half of the season in the second half of the season. And then we've got, in my opinion, the most surprising team, which is out of the NL West. It is the San Francisco Giants up seven games over 500 in the division that has both the Padres and Dodgers. Um, Padres and Dodgers, I don't even think of the Dodgers, just the Padres have been depleted with injuries. They've got Tatis, who's not hitting the way he should, but he is seeming to catch on. Uh, I think Denelson Lamette is still hurt for the Padres, which is hurting their rotation. But other than that, I mean, they're not allowing too many runs. You can see 120 runs allowed only, which means the pitchers aren't playing horribly. I just think the offense isn't playing at the level that it's we're used to and that they can which is why they are not leading the division right now. But the Giants are just hitting the ball extremely well. I didn't even think before I made this video that they were this far ahead in that division. Even though it's two games, they're just playing better. I've seen it a lot, and they've still got prospects that they can call up, call up soon. But the Dodgers are the biggest surprise, in my opinion. Sitting at one game above 500, uh, Mookie Betts, Corey Seager are both regressing from where they were last year. And I'm not saying ability-wise, but their stats are just clearly not as good. I'm not 100% sure if Bellinger's playing, but I saw some stuff that Bauer said that he's just saying the team is not playing at the level they should be, and that's going to be something to watch to see if they can step it up. But we're going to move on here to the stat leaders, and I think we're just going to look at average for now. The biggest surprise by far is the fact that Yerman Mercedes, I think he's 28, a 28-year-old catcher that had never played an MLB game, is hitting 373. He is leading the league in average, and I think Mike Trout is the guy right behind who seems to be slumping right now that is most likely, in my opinion, the MVP favorite for the AL. I'd have to think it's between, I don't even think it, it has to be Mike Trout, in my opinion. I think it could be between him, and I like Xander Bogarts, the year that Xander's having. Him and J.D. Martinez are both carrying the Red Sox, in my opinion, to the first place that they have right now. You can see Bogarts is hitting 350. He has added seven home runs, and he has 20 RBIs already, which is you know, not the most that you can see, but he's playing extremely well. His strikeout numbers to walk, I mean, I don't know if that's always been an issue with him, but this is very surprising to see for Mike Trout having 14 more strikeouts than walks. I am surprised, but it just shows you his OPS is still 1.177, which is just what you'd expect from Mike Trout. He's going to get on base even if he doesn't get those walks that he's accustomed to getting. Finally, this is probably the second biggest surprise. It is Jared Walsh. He is 27 years old, the first baseman for the Angels. He is hitting 347. He has seven home runs added on. He's just playing extremely well. I really didn't know who he was entering the season, but he is also helping the Angels out to the record that they have. Just imagine if him and Trout and Otani weren't playing at the level they are. It just shows you that the pitching staff for the Angels is so poor. That team probably could be a favorite if you give them probably three rotational pitchers from other teams. It is crazy to see, and we'll have to see if the Angels can do something about that. You just could think about the possibilities next year if Walsh plays to the level he is, Otani gets another year of progression, Trout is 
entering another year in his prime. David Fletcher is always going to get you that consistent average. And you just think, add that with Joe Adele, another year of progression from him. Could that team be a World Series contender for Mike Trout if they get an extra pitcher? Or two or three even. We'll have to see. But other than that, I think... Other than like the Red Sox and the Angels, Jesse Winker's consistently hit for average in his career. I've been saying it for years. He is one of the most consistent hitters in the MLB as a whole. But then you've got the team of the Houston Astros. And I'm pretty sure I clicked on... No, I clicked on the right one. Okay, there we go. We're going to look at the Astros right here. And we're going to... I'm just going to try and show you guys how insane this team is, at least hitting the ball. Let's see when it loads. As you can see here, we're just going to sort by average. You have one, two, three, four, five guys hitting over 300. You've got Altuve at 291. Aledmus Diaz as a bench bat hitting 273. And then you take a little bit of a dip when you've got Correa, you've got Miles Straw, you've got Kyle Tucker, three guys that are everyday players that are not hitting as well as they normally could. But those are guys that I think could easily step up how well, I mean, they're average and easily flip that season around as we've seen them do in many years. Maybe not Miles Straw, but at least Correa and Tucker. Tucker is striking out a lot, which he normally does. But I don't think that's, you know, something that we're surprised by. And I think that's something that he could fix, at least getting on base more. And this is a team that I just think is extremely scary for any team to face on any given day. It doesn't matter if somebody's out. This team is just so consistently going to score runs. They're going to hit the ball. I don't know how they are pitching. This is probably my World Series pick right now, and I'm sure it's a lot of people's. You've got Granke with a 4-2 ERA. You're Queedy at a 3-5. McCullers at a 3-6. But Christian Javier is really helping that team as a reliever. I feel like he's playing a starting role. I'm not 100% sure, but he has that lowest average at 2.9. Other than that, you've got, you just see a lot of players that are not, you know, extremely phenomenal players, at least for the pitching staff. I'm pretty sure these are their five starters. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's Garcia, Javier, McCullers, Urquidy, and Greinke. I So they're missing Verlander still in there playing this well. I just think once they, he returns and you've got those starters ironed out, you've got a half a season under your belt. I think this is a team that's going to be reckoned with. Granke's ERA is a little bit high to me. Your Quady's playing out of his mind, I think, which is only going to help this team. And that's something that I think everyone should be worried about, at least with the Houston Astros. Now, I don't think there's a person on this team that is going to win MVP, at least from a investment standpoint I wouldn't invest in any Astros players their prices are all so low and they're hated among sports fans collectors just because of the cheating scandal so I wouldn't recommend investing in anyone but Jordan's going to be a player that's always going to be good for the next decade at least the way he's been playing his first two seasons he's a guy that's consistently hitting for average hitting for home runs and he is a menace just in the batter's box so that's something you might want to think about but my best investments for you guys right now are going to be in, uh, I can't even think, Eloy Jimenez is extremely cheap right now. And if that team keeps playing the way they are once he returns from injury, you could make some quick flips once he returns. If he starts playing well, that's somebody that you could look to invest in. I think Xander Bogarts might be an MVP contender this year. He is extremely cheap from his 2012 update. You can get like a PSA 10 for only $150, which is something I would look into. Other than that, though, I think everyone's investing in Mike Trout right now. I think his prices are inflated, and you might see a little bit of what we saw with like the LeBron, Kobe, and Michael Jordan market where it increased for a couple of months and then took a huge tank down like more than 50%. So it's something to be careful about. I've been debating on whether or not I want to pick up a Trout um, and just think if he wins MVP or hold it for five years because he has a very good chance of going down as the best player ever. I don't think it would surprise people if he did, but he has that elusive World Series that he's just never been close to because of the supporting cast, because they are this smaller market Los Angeles team. But I think there's a lot of money to be made in a Cunha PSA 9 first Bowman's. He's still got to be the MLB or the uh, MVP favorite for the National League. I just can't think of anyone else that would 
overtake him right now, even though he's slumping. His balls and play average is extremely low. He's hitting contact. It's not like he's striking out like he did last year. He's shown great signs of improvement. He is just not getting that luck that a lot of players are. I think Tatis, I think his prices are still high, and I think he's trying to showing that he might not be that over 300 hitter for his entire career. I don't know if Mookie's prices have gone down or not based on how he's been playing, but I know those were extremely high. I would just have to guess right now my two guys that I would invest in are Ronald Acuna Jr. I don't know about his 10s. I think those are a little high, even though they've been dropping. And Mike Trout update PSA 10s. I think the ship has sailed on Otani prices. He has just went up dramatically. But I think somebody that you need to look out for is on the Seattle Mariners. And I don't think he might make that big of an impact for the team record-wise. But Jared Kalenic is getting called up. He is the fourth now overall prospect in baseball. And his counterpart, Julio Rodriguez, is right there in high A ball. I'd expect him up maybe by September call-ups this year. I'm not 100% sure if they'll even want to because they seem to have been manipulating Kalenic's um, playing time and manipulating his, I can't think of what it's called, but it's like call-up time or whatnot. So they've kept him in there a little longer than they've needed to. And I think a lot of people are angry with that, but we'll see if that affects them. But I think Kalenic could be a good buy. He's tearing up the minors right now. Rodriguez, I've talked about him. He's my number one baseball guy to buy. Um, I just want to see Wander's stats so far this season. I know he started off his first two or three games hitting extremely well. As you can see, he is 7 of 23 with an over 1,000 OPS and a 304 average. And he's playing in AAA, which is a more hitter-friendly league. So if he can keep that average up, that's good. He's hit two home runs in only 23 at-bats, which is something he's not, you know, we're not used to him doing. So if he's maybe developed some power, he might be a guy that you guys want to invest in. I recently just purchased a PSA 9 first Bowman for 80 bucks, and they've dropped like $10, and they're down to like 70 So that's something that's very inexpensive, in my opinion, for the number one overall prospect in baseball. Um, another guy that I don't know how he's playing this year, I think he's been – Having an up and down season, yeah, 4 of 21 for a 190 average for Adley. He's a guy that really hasn't shown us in his 150-ish minor league at-bats that he is that average hitter that he was in college, and he's making me a little bit worried because catchers are normally not known to hit for a great average, and they're not known to sell. So that might be a guy that I'm looking to flip what I can if he catches a hot streak. Torkelson, has he been playing? He has been playing. Wow. And he is struggling. He is a guy that I think does not deserve to be the number three prospect in baseball. I think he's a little bit lower down to this like seven to ten range. Um, Cabrian Hayes, I'm shocked he's even still on here. He should be way up here in the top three in my opinion after what he showed. C.J. Abrams had a really inflated numbers based off of how he played last year and he's continuing it with a 320 average. He might be the real deal. Contact wise, he hit almost 400 last year with three home runs. When you're hitting close to 400, your average doesn't really matter, but he is a guy that you're going to want to pay attention to because he's on the Padres, who are going to be a championship contending team for the next decade or so with that core that they have. Um, and he might be a guy that you want to look to invest in. Furthermore, we've got Rodriguez that I'm just, you, you've heard me rave about him if you've watched the minor league videos. His average hasn't really been there this year. He is 7 of 25. He's got a 280 average. I'd like to see that in the like 330 range because he's in high A, which is definitely a tough division. But last year, or last time he played in high A, he had a 462 average, which is just insane. In two home runs, he was 30 of 65. I mean, he's 7 of 25. So we'll see if he can pick that up and get back to where he was in high A. But he is a guy that's going to be really good for the next couple of years he's a guy I would recommend investing in now while you still have the chance while his numbers are not insane Pache has been a letdown this year but I don't really want to go through every single um, prospect but Andrew Vaughn is a guy that you might want to look to invest in as you can see in 70 at bats this year he's got a 260 average he's being asked to take on a larger role because of the injuries to Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert so that's something that we're going to have to watch out on his numbers could go down a little because maybe he wasn't ready and he might struggle this year, which might be a time to buy if his prices start to dip. I don't know if Austin Martin is playing, and he is. 
He's got a 235 average. He just came out in Bowman Chrome. He's a guy that I'm high on. I haven't bought him yet, but I am going to shortly. Let's see if there's anyone I really want to talk about. I don't think there is. Campuzano's really struggled this year. They already dropped him down to AAA. As you can see, he was 3 of 34 for a .088 average. In the minors, in 20 at-bats, he's hitting 200. So he seems to be struggling this year. He's a guy I was really high on. We'll see if he can turn it around. But from a team standpoint, I would like to go over the San Francisco Giants right here and just look at the prospects that they have. They've got another guy that isn't even included in here in Alexander Canario, who I'm really high on. But you've got the 14th prospect in baseball, 19th, 70th, 72nd. And then you've got Alexander Canario, who I think deserves to be in the top 100 with how he's been playing for the past few years. The Giants are a team that are showing that they can win now with a cast of role players. And we've seen teams do that in the past. Like the Nationals really relied on Howie Kendrick, and he played phenomenally when they won their World Series. Could the Giants be a team that does that this year? I'm not 100% sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. And the fact that they have the budget that they have where they're getting these top pro prospects, you've got four, five even if Hunter Bishop can learn to hit for average. He's struggling this year and only 12 at-bats. He's two for 12. So he's struggling, but he's a guy that has big power, big pop to that bat. You've got four consistent hitters here in Elliot Ramos, who, or Joey Bart, Marco Luciano, and Alexander Canario. The Giants are going to reload every single year with their international prospects, and they're a team that I would be on the lookout for that could be the next Padres, and their prices start to go up for their players. Marco Luciano's price is already insane. Joey Bart isn't there as much because he's a catcher, but he is 24 years old, so I would be careful about investing in him. But you can see he's 6 for 18 in the minors this year with two home runs. He is a guy that just consistently can hit the ball. And these are players that I think you need to be on the lookout for for when you're investing in cards and get a start on them when they're in the minor leagues because that is when you can make your get the most bang for your buck and have the highest return on investment. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really don't even have a MLB pick right now. I would have to say the Houston Astros just because of how well that they're playing as a team. I think they're playing the most complete baseball. I think the Red Sox numbers are a little high because of the teams that they've played and that are not as good. But I could just be ignoring the fact that they could be the real deal. Let me know in the comments down below who you think your, I guess, World Series pick is. I know it's really early to tell, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say and let me know if there's any prospects that you think even let's go outside of the top 100 that you think could be guys that make it big this year and make their way into the top 100 or even higher but that's going to be it for me and I'll